All right, and here we have a second example problem to help us get a start getting a feel for how to translate these problems into mathematics so we can figure out what's going on. Now, in this one, we've got a construction worker going up one of those open air elevators that you see sort of like attached to the outside of incomplete tall buildings. And she's going upwards, as is the elevator, at five meters per second when her cell phone slips out of her hand. And so clearly this upward velocity is going to be important in some way. Her hand was just off the edge of the rising platform, so the cell phone eventually falls all the way to the ground instead of just onto the elevator platform. Well, that's unlucky. Probably shouldn't have her hand sticking out of there, but, you know, uh, people are incautious sometimes. And if the cell phone was 25 meters above the ground, okay, so that's going to be important. When the worker fumbled it, how much time will it take to reach the ground? Okay, so here's the question, really, right there. And so we're looking for T. And the period of time, and in this case, I'm gonna draw a little diagram. The period of time we're looking for is, okay, uh, cell phone is dropped here. At that moment, right, it's moving upward along with the construction worker and the elevator at uh, five meters per second, right? That's gonna be the initial velocity of the cell phone. And so uh, when she drops it, well, now it's just under the influence of gravity. So it's gonna go up briefly and then it's going to turn around and it's going to go falling all the way down to the ground. And we're told that the release point, right? If the cell phone was 25 meters above the ground when the worker fumbled it. Okay, so at that release point, it is 25 meters above the ground. Cool, all right? That will be our delta x. And the only question is, okay, well, is that positive or negative? I'm going to set up a coordinate system sort of like we usually do, where up is positive. So our initial velocity is going to be positive, but our delta x, because it's dropping, right, it's reducing its position on our coordinate system, that delta x is going to have to be negative, okay, because moving down. All right, so we want the time this takes. We have its initial velocity, right, that's this, and we have its displacement during that time. And the set of information we're given stops there, right? Ooh. Well, fortunately, wrong, okay? Because if we just had that information, we couldn't solve this problem. We only have one, two knowns. And if you look at our tools down here in the equations of motion, we need at least one other known quantity to directly solve for any fourth quantity, an unknown. However, once it leaves her hand, only gravity is affecting it, right? It is in free fall. So we know that the acceleration of this thing is going to be negative, right? And our coordinate system down is negative, 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? So there we've got a third thing and we can find what it is that we want to find, all right? Now, if all you wanted to do was figure out how to set up the problem, then you can probably stop here, but I'll go through the solution because this one actually has a couple of different ways you can go and it's just sort of your preference on which way you want to go. All right, so we have those three knowns. If we look at our set of equations of motion, um, we don't have a final velocity, so you might think, okay, well, let's eliminate everything with a final velocity in it because we don't know any of those things, um, or we don't know any of the final velocities, so if we're going to do this in one step, then we're not going to be able to use any of those equations. But when we get to this third equation, right, uh, this, this dude right here, okay, well, no inherent problem there. It, the only problem per se is that we want time and this is a quadratic in time right so if we wanted this to work out if we wanted to use this to solve in one step we would put need to put it in standard form we would need to find all of the coefficients a and b and c and then you'd want to use um, 
our little quadratic equation, right? Which is, let's see if I know it by, let's see if I know it by heart. Hopefully I'm quoting it correctly, right? <clears throat> which is those coefficients a and b and c are what you get if you put this thing into standard form and put in all of our known quantities like v0 and acceleration and things like that, okay? So, you know, that can work out. Um, it's a lot of substitution. So, if, and if you don't feel like, or if you don't know the quadratic equation and go, don't feel like going and looking it up, you can do it in a two-step process instead. Remember, we said we don't know final velocity, but if we did, well, then suddenly the problem becomes very simple to do algebraically. So let's find an equation where we can find final velocity with the things that we have. And the first one won't do because we're looking for time, and we also don't know final velocity, so we're stuck there. Um, but we look at the second one in the list, and this one looks more promising because we can... We're already solved for uh, final velocity. Well, final velocity squared. And we know everything on the right-hand side here. So we can put all of that in. All right, it's 5 squared. We'll get 2, negative 9.8, negative 25 meters. And if we put all of that in, and we take the square root, right? Because we need to take the square root of both sides if we're going to get just v final. Well, we get into one of those situations where we actually have two different roots. The root itself is this. I'll keep some extra sig figs since we're not to our final answer yet. And the question is, is that positive or negative? Well, it's going to be negative, right? It's, it's hurtling towards the ground just before it smacks into it, okay? And so it's moving downward. And so that's one of those situations where we have to look at the physics of the situation to know which route we're going to preserve out of that uh, solution, okay? Now, once you have the final velocity, you can maybe put a little line here to separate out our work, and you can just take that first equation right there, and you can solve it for time. So we subtract v0 from both sides, and once we do that, we can divide both sides by a. It cancels over here, and we just need to put in our known quantities on the left, and we will get a time that comes out to be, if I've punched it into my calculator correctly and nothing else has gone wrong, uh, turns out to be 2.83 seconds if we go with the 3 sig fig mark. Okay, so that's the rest of the solution of the problem. And you could, go, again, go this, this route, uh, and you would get exactly the same answer. All right? So thanks for your attention. I hope this seeing this process a couple more times is helpful and um, I'm planning on posting the stills of these solutions as well though a few of the little marks and things will probably make more sense if you're watching the video version all right so see you later